Hi everybody and welcome to part 2 of my video on how I make my line through spoon. If you haven't seen part 1, I encourage you to follow the link up here to that one so you can see the, the first part, which is where I made my master. This is the one. In this part we'll show you how to, to make a mold, cast some lures, paint them and in the end we'll uh, go test fishing and see if they're worth anything. So just hang in here and let's get going. The master has now had uh, a few layers of uh, spray spackle and is um, fairly smooth. I won't do uh, any more about it uh, at this point. Um, even though the, there might be minor mistakes in, in the mold, well, the, the surface of the lure rarely gets very smooth in, in, uh, when you're cast in metal anyway, so it doesn't really matter for me. The rest will just have to be uh, filed or sanded anyway. Okay, so now the, 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 we are ready to go on with the mold and uh, making a two-part silicone mold for, for this is uh, the same procedure as, um, as all the other stuff I make. So um, I encourage you to see one of the movies on that subject alone. Uh, I try to leave some, uh, some links up here for those. Okay, but uh, I'll just leave in a few clips here and uh, just show you one thing that I'll leave in the, the pin here because I need that for every cast to make the, the, the channel, the hole that goes all the way through the lure. Okay, so um, I'll just do that and uh, well then let's just get started with the mold. I prepared a few things here. First of all I have the, the modeling clay I need to For the first part, push it down. Now we are ready to, to, to pour in the silicone and the, the silicone I'll be using for this uh, part is uh, some heat resistant silicone um, which is uh, this one. Um, apart from that it's just uh, mixing and so on and I'll use my mask and some gloves while I do that. Uh, once I pour in the, the silicone I will add a piece of uh, wood here which will be pressed a bit into the silicone so it's, uh, it's stuck there and uh, then I won't have to uh, um, worry about uh, having sides to put on when I make my casts. So I have just uh, made such two pieces of wood for that purpose. Okay, and uh, I've calculated the size of the, the mold and I also have another little mold I need to make. Um, so uh, I ended up with 100 grams of silicone all in all um, for this uh, first half. Okay, now I'll just put on my safety gear and uh, mix up the the silicone. passed and uh, we're now ready to make uh, layer 2 so I'll just uh, peel off the, the modeling clay here and um, we can have a look at the first half looking very nice and uh, well then we're just uh, going to complete the funnel here on the other side and uh, build up the, the Legos and uh, grease it up with Vaseline mix some more silicone pour it in and leave it for 24 hours and then we are ready to cast I think.
24 hours has passed and the mold is now completely hardened. Uh, I removed the, the Lego frame and uh, now I can open the, the mold and uh, see how it turned out. And I, as always I'm a bit excited about this point, but let's just, just see. Seems like it splits fairly well here. Like that, there's a few spots like there where I didn't apply enough Vaseline maybe, but um, looks fairly nice. The surface of the lure at least uh, seems to be 100%, so that part is quite nice. And uh, as the 24 hours has already passed, uh, well, it should be ready to, to start casting now, so I'll just uh, I'll just heat up some uh, some tin to be able to uh, to do some casts. Uh, normally, when you uh, cast these uh, type of lures, you you blacken the the mold with some uh, 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 blacken from from a candle. But um, I discovered that the talc also works very well and uh, is a lot easier to use. So I'll just uh, be using that as a a mold release. Also, I need to cut uh, some pieces of wire which has the same length as uh, the one used in the master uh, to be able to put those in the mold. But, uh, well, let's see how it all works out. Okay, and uh, now we're going on with the, with the casting uh, once again. And again, I'm using my, my fume cabinet for, for this, so I should be certain even though I'm using tin, which isn't uh, supposed to be toxic, uh, it's still a good idea to take your precautions. Normally I'd probably use a, a mask, but uh, with, the, with the fume cabinet and the ventilation going on max, and uh, I think I can leave it for these uh, recordings. Okay, uh, I've melted up some, uh, some tin here, and I just uh, skimmed it, all the impurities off into this uh, so it's ready for a few casts. The, I'll just be using a clamp here to, to keep the two parts together and um, then I have cut out a, some small pieces of wire and uh, this I have here is uh, some copper grease which I'm going to use to uh, just uh, grease up the, the wire here. Don't use too much, just a thin layer is enough to uh, make sure that it doesn't get stuck in the mold or in the in the in the lure here. So I'll just uh, set them like that. And probably the first cast or the first few casts until the, the mold is probably heated uh, might be, be uh, might won't work but uh, well, let's see how it turns out. You never know. Maybe you're lucky. And um, I'll just uh, like that. And I should have been using my gloves. Well, too eager to get it going. So let's just see. And now the the tin up here in the funnel is quite hard. So I'm fairly convinced that the lure is fully hardened and um, well you can see here I think it looks uh, very nice very easy to get further on from this and then it's just a question of removing the pin and uh, you should try to uh, avoid bending it so you can reuse it first I just uh, wiggle it and this time I just uh, were able to just uh, pull it out right away and then, uh, well, it's just a question of uh, repeating the process. Uh, first of all, grabbing the, a little bit of talc to, uh, to the mold, having uh, a little bit of grease on the pin.
Then we assemble the loam like that. Put on the clamp. Well, I think that's all for now. I'll just cast a, a bunch of lures and uh, we'll be uh, ready for the painting process. I've now casted a few lures here and uh, I must admit there's a bit of a learning curve every time you, you start up a new mold. Uh, a learning curve on, on how much pressure you should put on it to get the perfect cast. Uh, along the way I think I ended up with some uh, quite nice casts and uh, well Next time I'll probably be a, a bit better to get them all fine. There's a few here uh, where the, the wire has kind of surfaced and of course uh, that is a problem. But I'll just fill it up with some spackle before I paint it and it won't, uh, won't matter anyway. Well, now we got to the post-processing part. Uh, and um, we need to remove the, the, the funnel here and um, well, I must admit I was... Uh, I was uh, making a fairly big funnel to make sure that the 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 tin would flow or uh, into the mold well and uh, make sure that I got uh, no incomplete casts. But now I have a fairly big funnel to remove, and uh, I think it's a bit too big to actually just remove by using the plier. So I probably have to saw a bit, but uh, hopefully that won't be too much. Uh, just making sure that I do not damage the the lure. When I uh, clean up the, the, the cast here, I use uh, two different files. One that is uh, fairly coarse and a finer one. Uh, the coarse one is only for the, the big parts, which is um, far away from the the, the, the lure here. Um, so that so I don't damage anything and once I get close which uh, is most of it in, in this case uh, only the funnel bit is uh, is for the coarse one I can start uh, with the final one and uh, going all around the lure and I have to make certain that all the sharp edges are removed so I don't have anything that can damage my line so I'll just do that after that uh, I have to clean up the hole as well and uh, for that I use a tiny drill, uh, drill here uh, which uh, can uh, cut the edges of the hole here. The hole in this case is one millimeter and this uh, I think is a one and a half two millimeter drill. So that is um, fairly close to the hole size and that gives me a nice one to cut those edges making sure that my, uh, my line isn't damaged. Um, well, now I'm uh, just going to file away on these uh, lures here and that will take me a little while and then afterwards we are ready to start painting uh, some of them. Okay, I don't think a completely smooth surface is uh, needed for, for this type of lure but uh, still some of the lures had the deeper cracks and um, I used a bit of filler to, to fill those out. Um, so now I'll just uh, go ahead and uh, sand them over. And uh, this will also uh, scratch up the surface a little bit, giving the, the paint a better surface to cling on to. So I'll just do that with all the lures that is uh, going to be painted. And then we are ready for the, the painting. One last uh, preparation before the painting is to, to place a, a pin in each end of the, the lure here. This um, enables me both to handle the, the lure while I'm painting and also prevents the, the holes from getting clogged with the paint. Okay, and then I just place them here in my holder and I just have to clean up my, um, my fume cabinet to get on with the painting. I'm now ready to, to start painting the lures and I'm going to make uh, five different patterns, all uh, classic patterns for, for my fishing, 
one that is uh, a stickleback, one that is uh, a somewhat a sandy-like color, a white one, a pink and white one, and then uh, a copper colored one as well. All of them require a white base coat, so first of all I'll start out by uh, applying a base coat to all of the lures and that'll take a little while uh, and then we'll get on to the actual coloring of the lures. Next step is to uh, give them all a pearlized color. Uh, some of them only on the belly side and uh, a few of them on the whole body, uh, mainly the, the white one and the pink uh, and white one. Okay, so I'll just uh, do that. The stickleback and the sand eel uh, like patterns are going to have silver sides, so I'll be using this uh, aluminum color for that as well as this uh, little mesh which I'm going to use for scale patterns. And um, the way that I do it is that I start out by uh, spraying lightly through the, the mesh to give some scales and then afterwards I apply a, a thin layer of uh, silver as well. This I think gives a very nice effect that from some angles you will see the scales and from other angles it will all be all shiny. But um, well, that's how I do it. So I'll just do that, and to do that I need my hands free, so I use this little third hand tool. Next step will be uh, to give uh, a few of them the, the copper uh, color, uh, just like I did with the, the silver one, so that will be uh, the same here. Okay, and now I'll just uh, paint a green back on uh, some of these, which is going to be the sandy like color, I think. And now a black back on. Uh, the, the copper ones and the, the, the stickleback ones, which is my favorite, so that will be the most of these. Now a pink back on some of them, a typical winter color here for Denmark. And as a finishing touch on some of the lures I add a, an orange striking point near the, the hook. That will be the natural colors like the stickleback, the, the sand eel and uh, the copper one. My first plan for coating the lure was to use this uh, rattle can lacquer, uh, which I've been using for, for other stuff as well. But, um, well, it didn't turn out quite as good as I wanted to. The problem with the rattle can is that you often get either too much or too little on the lure, and uh, you very easily get uh, runners or bubbles or uh, drops or whatever. So, in the end, I didn't, uh, wasn't uh, satisfied with the result. So, instead, I tried out uh, some UV resin 
uh, that I have been lying around for a while and uh, for that project I built this little rotator which is uh, rotating the lures uh, both uh, during and before the, the actually harden, hardening process where I used this uh, nail box uh, UV uh, light source. Okay, If you want to see more about that project you should follow the link up here where I have a guide to how you, you build this and you also see a bit about the, the coding process itself. Well, in the end I ended up with a bunch of nice lures uh, give, having a, a very nice coating and it just takes about an hour and the lure is ready to fish with. So now I'm actually ready to go fishing but it won't be today because the weather is just awful here in Denmark but uh, shortly I'll take them out fishing and hopefully I'll be able to catch a sea trout on my new lures. I must admit that the test fishing didn't go as easy as I hoped for. Here in the winter time you really just can't count on the fish being there when you need them. But all from the beginning I was quite certain that the movement was right, so it was just a question of time and finding some hungry fish. And in the end I managed to do so. But uh, it took me a few trips to, to get all the, the right recordings uh, for this. And uh, if you see the weather changing on the way, it's just because it's uh, from different trips. Well, go ahead and watch and enjoy. I'm out by the fjord to do a bit of test fishing of the new lure. With me I brought a box of uh, different colors. Uh, but the one I'm going to start with is the silver and black, which is the one that uh, represents the stickleback the most, I think. And out here, there's a lot of sticklebacks. So this is one of the colors I usually fish here. Uh, I rigged up the lure on the... So it is sliding on the line. In front of it, I have a float stop to prevent it from sliding up too far. Behind it, I have a little uh, bead to protect the knot. And uh, then a few split rings and a single hook. Sometimes I use trebles, sometimes I use singles. But there, if there's a lot of weed in the water, it's often a, a, a good thing to use a single. The weather today is, uh, well, it's the, one of the first day of spring. Uh, it is 8 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have clouds and sun, uh, a good mixture of that, and quite a lot of wind. This is uh, what I consider more or less optimal conditions uh, for this type of fishing. So hopefully the sea trout's out there and willing to play with us and the new lure. Finally a small fish here, nothing big, but a nice little uh, sea trout. It's not a keeper, so I'll just uh, release him uh, gently. Nice little small trout here. I think it's uh, legal, but uh, I'll release it anyway. big fish but uh, seems they are going here on a rather dull uh, bottomed area nice little one still once again here typical fish for this uh, this area a little bit brown um, fat Really nice and fat. I'll just grab the head for this one.
Well, I finally had a bit of success with the, with the new lure and uh, my test fishing. Um, it has been quite windy today, so uh, not as much speak, and you can probably hear it on the, uh, the sound as well. But I, I caught a few fish, uh, this one being the biggest. Not a, a huge fish, but nice and fat, and uh, that will go home to the frying pan. Um, well, all in all, it just proved that what I've been convinced all since the beginning that uh, the movement of the lure really was good. It took me quite a few uh, test fishing trips, but uh, in this uh, time of year, you just uh, can't uh, always count on the fish being there. So, uh, well, today I'm very happy about the result, and uh, now I think uh, it uh, just approved my, my new lure design. Oh, this is a good fish. This is a good fish. On the new lure here. I pulled back a bit. Strong, really strong. Could be a really nice fish. Losing the break just a little bit because this one I really want. I really want this fish. There it is. Nice fish, nice fish. and heavy whoa just saw me there oh come on come on come on easy 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 nice and easy come on good thing about the single hook is once it's hooked like this they rarely get loose and with the the line through it can use the the, the lure to shake it off oh my god it's strong it's really, really strong, this fish. Not at all tired yet. Just make my net ready here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, this is a nice fish. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, come on. It's just so strong. Okay, come on. Come on, 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 come on. Oh. Fighting like a bull. Oh. Oh my god. Look at this. Just ribbing offline. This one. Oh my God. Hope, let's hope. Careful, careful, careful. Come on, into the net, into the net, into the net, into the net. Yes! Oh my god, it's a strong fish. A little bit skinny, I would say. Probably been up spawning lately. Uh, can see that from the fins. And. Uh, the side.
really a fish that has been up spawning. You can see the fins and uh, the collar here. Oh my God, such a nice fish. Uh, well, it's um, I think around 60, 60 plus centimeters, probably a two kilo fish, this one. Well, on the new lure, really a nice fish. Uh, still a bit colored, not too thick. So I think we'll let it go. Hopefully I can get this on camera. There we go. Woohoo! As you can see from the test fishing, the fish really approved my new lure, and so do I. Along the, the production of this movie and uh, making some more spoons afterwards, I've learned a few things that I just want to mention here for you to learn from. One thing being that uh, the mold I made, well, in my attempts to get uh, to use as little silicone as possible, the lure ended up quite close to the edge, uh, especially down here at the bottom. And um, this gave me the problem that after 10, 12 uh, casts, the tin seemed to be leaking out down here, uh, ruining every lure. So I actually already made a, a new mold with, uh, which is uh, having a lot more material around the lure and this should solve this problem. Another thing also is that uh, I made a, a smaller funnel, which is easier to saw off, as um, that was a bit of an annoying thing. Also, I found out that it seems that uh, with the second hand soldering tin I'm using, there actually is a, a different metal content in some of the pieces, and this gave me a few problems in the casting process. Um, if you run into this, you could consider getting a, a better source of uh, tin or maybe using white metal, which of course is a bit more expensive. But, uh, well, it is possible to use this and it is fairly cheap. Okay, that's all for this time. I hope you liked this movie about my line through spoon and I hope you see me soon.